Hello my friends and channel subscribers, Greg here from Brisbane, Australia with another uncut, unedited, no ball video. Today's video will be a little bit of review of my experience with uh, Goodway Inverter for the last year. I've got it almost a year, I think uh, 11 months approximately. And also I'll briefly compare it with my previous Fronius experience and touch on battery uh, options. Uh, by the way, this video was inspired by viewers like yourselves that are planning to install solar system or install solar system in a battery. So let's start with the good things about Goodwin Inverter. First of all, after a year of use, I had no faults, so uh, inverter performs beautifully. Inverter is very quiet, so it has a uh, passive cooling. Uh, that was my biggest beef with um, Fronius Inverter. Literally, had uh, my previous house was really, really big. I, I think 279 square meters. And in a hot summer day, I could hear Fronius Inverter almost from every single room. Look, uh, some distance rooms, you, you, you probably need to listen hard to hear it, but still, you know, when you hear inverter almost in the half of the house uh, voluntarily, that's not a good situation. Um, yes, they come with 10 years warranty. Yes, from your reputable uh, company. Um, I seriously could not stand that noise. And uh, when my neighbor installed a Huawei or Huawei inverter, it was hybrid inverter, 5 kilowatt inverter, and was totally silent. I made my mind, uh, I don't have to install the same with my neighbor but I will install a passively cooled inverter. So uh, the reason why I chose Goodway, first of all, uh, it is a reputable company, at least in Australia, with a good uh, support. Secondly, uh, the size of inverter, you know, many people going for smaller, better units. Uh, I come from a little bit of uh, electric and engineering background. To me, uh, I totally understand how heat sink works or, or basically heat exchange. And I knew the small unit is the biggest struggle will be in Australian summer to dissipate that heat. So uh, I, don't, I didn't know, um, well, when I bought my uh, good windows, there were no uh, reviews online. There was nothing for me to understand quality or how it performs in the summer. Hence the reason for my first video. So I can report you. So I installed uh, inverter in the winter, at the end of the winter. Uh, it was with me through uh, spring, Australian summer, Australian autumn, and now again uh, winter. Uh, so um, inverter starts approximately a couple of degrees lower than ambient temperature. I'm not sure whether it's inaccurate reading or heatsink basically cools it a little bit uh, uh, better than you know than environment so things are wind blowing through and all that anyway speculation uh, it starts at ambient temperature and in the spring towards summer uh, i saw inverted temperature reporting internal temperatures up to 70 degrees really it was a bit of worry because 70 degrees is really hot so when I touched inverted, it was really hot to touch. But again, um, if you think of other electronics like uh, modern routers and things like that, I think modern electronics are designed to run at the temperature. And I think uh, good we did uh, really good research and development there. So the first point, users ask how hot inverter runs. I never seen it above 72 degrees. And that was, I think the day was close to 34, 35 degrees Celsius. My inverter on the east side, so uh, sun was rising there. And I guess even still at 11 o'clock in the morning, when the sun is almost at north point, it still kind of touches the east, which is inverter side. So not direct uh, sun exposure, but let's say from 10 o'clock in the morning, when it's almost direct exposure, to almost midday when inverter still on the sunny side, I could see easy between 60 to 72 degrees temperatures and it's all fine, no troubles there, no error codes. So if you worry about uh, heat sink and dissipation of the heat, uh, my inverter half day on the sunny side, first half of the day and 
it's all fine. So if you see 60, 70 degrees, it's not a worry. Moving right along. Noise. As I say, if your uh, noise is worried to you and you really would like quiet environment, don't have to choose good way. Choose any inverter with a passive heating that has a good record of not failing because of the heat exposure. Good way is fine. I would not choose Fronius, um, an outreputable company. Sorry guys to disappoint you. Uh, Fronius out of my box for now. Now, um, why again Goodwin? It's a three stream inverter. So if your house is like almost a square house and you like even distribution between east, north and west, you can actually hook it up to all three streams. Um, I still hook up my inverter to three streams, but uh, I put 35% um, probably uh, panels on the east side and around 65% of panels on the west side. And the reason is that I want um, probably more equal power generation in the summer and winter. And because my house is not north facing, it's actually two long sides, one east, one west. I thought I would give a little bit more exposure. At like winter, when sun sets, I would like more exposure to the west side. So it was my uh, personal choice. Uh, so if you look at the bell curve, my bell curve kind of ramps up um, as morning progresses and then kind of picks and then goes all the way and almost drops off. So it's not like a bell curve, it's almost like climb and then uh, sharper descent. So that was my um, kind of choice. Every house is different. If your house is facing true north, you can put all your panels there. You almost have no choice. But if you can be creative, think of winter, summer, and uh, mid seasons to um, avoid the bell curve. Bell curve is really uh, not beneficial, especially <clears throat> if you're pushing uh, maximum generation like myself. Let me remind you what maximum generation is. It's illegal in Australia to export more than five kilowatts on single phase um, electricity grid. However, you can oversize inverters and panels accordingly. So you can um, oversize inverter up to double of five kilowatt, which is 10 kilowatt. And you can oversize panels at 133%. So my system is 13.2 kilowatts panels. 10 kilowatts inverter shaped to 5 kilowatts uh, grid and exports 5 kilowatts. So it picks at 5, stays at 5. Uh, another very frequent question is what happens if you consume uh, uh, more than 5 kilowatts or just consume any power during the day but generate more than 5? So inverter will pick at 5 and let's say you can generate up to 10. So if you consume any um, any amount of electricity up to 10 kilowatt, it will ramp up. So let's say if you consume one kilowatt, it will ramp up to six to export five and consume one and so on until maximum power generation. You will see it on inverter. It actually works very magically. With Goodway, you don't need any special device to do so. The inverter itself does it for you. So it's another common question. How do you shape uh, output? Good way does it for you. It shapes five kilowatt and will let you to consume more than five so you can export exactly five kilowatt. Amazing feature, really great. So moving along, another question is um, why in my previous house I put Tesla power wall on the Fronius and here I did not put battery. So this is where uh, I'm proud to run my channel the way I run it because I discover something's hard way and I help people with information that you actually make your own choice. So when I install a system, I didn't have money for the battery. Battery is still expensive and the um, return on, on investment is very subjective. So uh, if you decide to install battery for whatever reason on top of the system, here what you need to know. 
I cannot quote direct legislation. I'm just saying what installers told me. So here's the story. If you would like to install a battery on your system, your inverter should not exceed five kilowatts. So I told my installer, look, it's shaped to five kilowatts. What's the story? And my, and my installer say, it's not how your electricity supplier or provider look at the things. If inverter is 10 kilowatts, the exporting figures are distorted. So your inverter should be actually model of five kilowatts if you'd like to install battery. So here's a three different scenarios. One, like what I've got, like I, let's say involuntarily because I did want to install battery, I just learned hardware that I can install battery. So you install, you maximize your uh, uh, power expert and you not allowed to install battery. So I've got 13.2 kilowatt of panels that basically create a nice kind of almost square shape generation for, for me uh, through the day, uh, through 10 kilowatt inverter shape to five. So let's say in a summer day, by seven o'clock in the morning, I'm already generating five kilowatts and those five kilowatts would die off around five-ish PM. So almost like um, really square. So if your idea is to supply yourself with electricity during the day around all your appliances and you don't care about night uh, and you would like to maximize your power output, do your best to buy uh, the biggest inverter you can with the largest amount of panel and shape it to five kilowatt if you're in a single phase. I cannot guide you anywhere about three phases because it's getting a little bit more complex, but um, not much more complex. I just don't want to talk about this because I don't have experience. So second scenario, if you still would like to be on a single phase, you would like to install battery later on or right now, you need um, to buy a hybrid inverter if you would like natively your battery talk to inverter, so it will be DC to DC talk and an inverter will be hybrid, so it can work with AC as you agreed and DC is battery. There's no need to double uh, invert uh, electricity so that was my problem with the power wall so power wall uh, inversion approximately uh, 7 to 10 percent efficiency loss and new inverter is another 5 to 7 so with the heat generation everything you're losing approximately 20 percent of power to convert your panels generate DC they go into inverted converts to AC then it goes to Tesla that has that inverter AC to DC because battery is DC so that the whole cycle would cost you approximately 20% of electricity. So if you still would like to uh, install any other battery but Tesla, I would suggest you think about a hybrid inverter. If your idea is Tesla, uh, look, you can install any inverter that you want. Uh, Tesla can be retrofitted. It has a gateway box with a 3G, but you need uh, Wi-Fi for uh, uh, warranty and updates. They've got very uh, freq frequent amount of updates. The, the interface is amazing. The whole thing is amazing. I will not talk about it. The video is not about Tesla. So the first setup, maximum generation, maximum panels, uh, biggest inverter, five kilowatt shaping. The second option is a hybrid inverter or normal inverter and a battery. And the third option is uh, basically a no battery, uh, just a, a small system if you cannot afford much more. So, to conclude this video, um, I'm happy with the Goodwill. I cannot install battery and uh, my power generation is great. The reason why I start talking about battery is because of electricity cost right now. So electricity price goes up, they fit in what they pay us as power generators goes down. So if I don't consume my own power, it's almost um, economically not viable to put system up and, uh, and um, return costs at the moment. So I'm a little bit upset that um, I did not think uh, clearly that I won't be able to install battery. Um, to be honest, not that I didn't think, I just assumed that five kilowatt shaping would allow me to install battery. But obviously, legislation is not on my side. There are some positive news about that. My installer said that legislation just about to change. So we can retrofit battery to almost any inverter 
but output as a fit in uh, fit in to a grid would be limited to 1.5 kilowatts look if they pay five cents per kilowatt in Australia for fed back into the grid it's just almost not worth it so uh, I'm more than happy to answer all your questions uh, out of best my of my ability uh, and I hope this video helps someone to make their mind on solar system they used to be straightforward now they're not quite but there are still plenty of people that are deciding thinking and um, please take your time uh, and hopefully my video was helpful to you again thank you so much for watching Greg from Brisbane Australia until next time